All right. So, uh, bonjour and uh, greetings to everyone out here. Thank you for coming to join us at the CREA conference uh, virtually, just to play it safe. Uh, I agree with that decision. Uh, although it's difficult, uh, we have to do what we have to do to stay safe. Uh, my name is Joe Pudlasek. I am a uh, Ojibwe uh, from the Lacoudre Reservation in northern Wisconsin. Um, today, I have uh, Mike Pamanakut with us, a uh, decorated Vietnam veteran, and I'll let him introduce himself real quickly. Also, my name is Mike Pamanakut, and I'm from uh, Menominee Res, and I'm glad to be here for you guys. Okay, so today to open up, we're honored. Thank you to Stanford and uh, his team and everyone at CREA for allowing us to share these few minutes with you. To open it up and then we're going to see you again on Friday to have a good one to close it out. Um, but I'm going to ask Mike to uh, sing a song here to get us started Then I'm going to offer a prayer um, and then you guys get to go to work. So Mike, take it away. Would you mind uh, sharing a little bit about that song and then talking about that beautiful drum you have? Okay, yeah. The song we sing at a lot of gatherings when we do certain things. This song is for, it's that time of the year now where the bear is starting to get ready to hibernate for the year. And we honor them with this song so they can prepare themselves to go into hibernation. And uh, I was given this song, I sing this song with uh, Seven Spring Singers. And uh, I was honored to uh, sing it for you today. And uh, the drum I have here, it's, uh, it was gifted to me seven years ago because I am a member of the Bear Clan of the Menominee Indian Reservation. And I was really honored to accept this drum and sing with it. I've been singing with it ever since, but. I'm uh, really happy that you guys invited me here to sing for you in Wawanin. See you Friday. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Um, so now I'd like to offer a prayer. Um, it's, a, it's an Ojibwe prayer to start the day off. Um, so since we're here and doing it this way, uh, remain seated. Um, we believe that if you're close to the ground, that's a good thing when you when you say your prayers too. Uh, so it doesn't always have to be standing, but um, uh, I'm gonna start this prayer now. So thank you, Creator. Thank you to Grandfather for sharing, shining on us today. I say thank you for this day uh, that I will look upon everyone in a good way. 
and that I will talk to everyone in a good way. Thank you, Mother Earth, for giving us life, for giving us food, for giving us water, and for giving us the animals, and for giving us and for giving us the air that we breathe. I offer my tobacco to the four directions, the north, the east, the south, and the west. Help me to be able to stand strong and to have a strong heart. Thank you to the creator, uh, Winnebujo, and I wish you all a great conference to help change the world now. Um, Korea has done so much work in bringing culture into educational research. Um, I, I wish you a strong, strong conference and come up with positive solutions. Thank you. Dear Korea family, friends, and colleagues, thanks to Korea family member Joe Polisek of the Trickster Gallery in Schaumburg, Illinois, for the welcome to the virtual space for this conference. Joe has provided this necessary welcome for each of our Korea conferences. This one, of course, required a little bit different spin, but when I asked Joe to accommodate, he commented, Stafford, we are native and we adapt. So thanks again, and we will look forward to the closing blessing as well. It is my pleasure to welcome the more than 400 conference registrants to phase two of the sixth international conference of the Center for Culturally Responsive Evaluation and Assessment and sponsored by the College of Education at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'm Stafford Hood, CREA's founding director, Sheila Miller Professor Emeritus, and Professor of Curriculum and Structure Emeritus in the College of Education. Our community worked very hard and we're optimistic about at least a sizable number of us being together in Chicago at the Palmer House and others also participating virtually over the next few days. However, in good conscience, we were not comfortable with us being able to be together in person and risking our collective well-being over a three-day period. Still, we are confident that this will be an exciting gathering and centennial celebration for our beloved elder, Professor Edmund W. Gordon. Again, as I mentioned, more than 400 of us are registered for the conference from Ireland to the US, Australia, and New Zealand in this virtual space. Our journey, journey forth to this moment provides additional lessons learned for the work we must do in facing the many challenges before us as a community. But I do believe this is as it should be to provide context when gathering in the space of our community, whether in person or virtually. We are here to reinvigorate each other and strengthen our resolve to do what we know is our important work. For some of us, as Sister Hazel Seminette would say, we are at the requirement phase of our work as we intentionally direct this discourse towards the next generation of the field to carry on and discover new pathways. We must continue to convene as a vigilant interdisciplinary group of US indigenous and international researchers, practitioners, and scholars to focus on the role of culture and theory and practices of evaluation and assessment. We must continue to interrogate cultural responsiveness against the backdrop of racism and colonialism in undertaking our work. We must continue to speak out and name acts of racism and hatred for what they are as we remain committed to culturally responsive evaluation, measurement and assessment. At the same time, we must vigilantly interrogate ourselves as practitioners of assessment and evaluation to ensure that we are interrupting rather than perpetuating systems of power that are marginalizing. We had no idea that when we established our conference theme and purpose statement, that the compelling evidence would persist so prominently for nearly two years, reconfirming why we do what we do. The CREA global community fully recognizes the challenges before us as we are informed by the lessons that have gotten us 
here thus far. Let me thank you all for hanging in there with us. I believe we will be stronger as a result of this experience. I must extend my sincere thanks to the CREA staff, College of Education IT staff, CREA leadership team, CREA conference planning team, plenary and keynote speakers and presenters. You will also find that our CREA affiliate researchers are spread throughout the program, often doing double duty as presenters and chairs on multiple sessions. Special shout outs to our international family who are either up very late in Ireland or up very early in Aratura, New Zealand. Also our thanks to the American Evaluation Association, W.K. Kellogg Foundation, and the Anna E. Casey Foundation, and the Chicago Land Evaluation Association. Of course, I must also express my sincere thanks to the College of Education at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, my UIUC colleagues, and particularly Dean James D. Anderson for the continued support provided to CREO since its inception. Dean Anderson has been involved with this community since the early conceptualization of what has evolved into what we now know as CREO. Dean Anderson was a part of CREO's early groups when I was at Arizona State University through several NSF funded projects and annual conferences on the relevance of assessment and cultural evaluation. I now turn to him for his welcome message to our community with his remarks followed by, by video welcomes from CREA Dublin, CREA Hawaii, our newly established CREA St. Mary University in San Antonio, Texas, and our partner in CREA's ongoing historically black causes and university initiative, the Center for the advancement of STEM leadership, with CREA become also sending its best wishes. Thank you and welcome to our conference. Uh, <clears throat> hello to the CREA family. I'm James Anderson, Dean of the College of Education at the Urbana campus of the University of Illinois. Welcome to the sixth uh, International Conference of Korea. I want to take a few minutes to say welcome and also to thank um, all of the people who have helped put this um, conference on. Um, it's been an extra burden uh, to the college that we negotiated in and out of a contract and then to switch to virtual. Um, there are a lot of people who have invested time and efforts to get us to this point. I want to say particular thanks to Tim Leahy and Adam Rush. Um, I don't see how we could even um, go virtual without the support and the, uh, and the effort they put into this. Uh, despite the fact that we can't meet in person, and we know that Korea is the kind of conference that is, that is designed uh, to meet in person uh, because of what we gain from each other and seeing each other is so important uh, and the fellowship is so critical um, aside from the scholarship that always come with the career conference. Uh, I'm still impressed, very extremely uh, favorably impressed in the fact that we have over 400 registered participants. Uh, we have a dream team of keynote speakers. That's just absolutely amazing. And I'm sure people are looking forward to hearing from them. And we have such a rich variety of sessions. Um, and so we are prepared to have a great uh, career conference. Uh, we have um, participants and speakers and sessions, and so we're ready to go. I think we all look forward to when we can meet each other again in person, and I certainly hope to be there when we can. Uh, in the meantime, welcome. Um, let's have a great conference, and I'll turn it back over to um, uh, Stafford Hood. I do want to say also a special thanks to Stafford and Rodney, who have been uh, leaders of CREA on the campus and also have been all over uh, the process of getting this meeting online. So thanks to them, and we'll go back to Stafford for the short videos.
Mura Yves Galer. Hello from Dublin. My name is Joe O'Hara, and along with my colleague, Dr. Martin Brown, I'm director of CREA Dublin, which is hosted at Dublin City University. And I have to say, I'm absolutely delighted to have the opportunity to greet all the attendees at CREA 6. Um, it's a centrally important part of our work here in CREA in Dublin to have the opportunity to connect with the wider CREA community. And this conference, although it's online, allows us to do that again. And for us, it's the centre of our year in many ways. Um, CREA as a community is something more than just an academic engagement. CREA is a place where we get an opportunity to speak and be with people who share our values and share our interests and share our commitment to thinking about what it means to be culturally responsive in an increasingly challenging world. And this year's theme exploring the idea of the interrogation of cultural responsivity against the background of racism and colonialism is deeply resonant for us. Um, our own particular historical and cultural experience within Ireland is one in which the concept of colonialism is a real one for us and we've experienced it in many different guises over, over many centuries and we're also living at the moment with the with the responses to that and with the implications of an extended colonial experience. But we're also conscious as well that many Irish people and indeed many European people uh, have been very responsible for the imposition of colonial structures on other cultures around the world. And it's that dichotomy, it's that debate, it's that challenge that the theme this year forces us to think about. We're also forced to think about the idea of racism and the idea of the lived experience of racism across many different contexts and settings. Um, the Irish situation is an interesting one in that, the, apart from our indigenous minority the traveller community, there was very little um, non-Irish presence within our country for much of the 20th century. And yet in the last 20 years, we've seen an explosion in diversity. And those diverse and different uh, and individuals from different cultural, ethnic and geographic backgrounds have added immeasurably to our society. However, their experience is not necessarily one that's been universally positive. And as researchers and as academics and as people with a commitment to the idea of cultural responsivity, we're required, I think, to think about what that means. And because we work in the field of education, we're committed to exploring what it means to be culturally responsive in the education setting, but also to try and think about what the experience of many different Irish people from many different backgrounds and groups, how they experience Irish education. And we do that with colleagues from around Europe. Uh, through a number of different projects and a number of different programs. We're working with colleagues from Russia and from Spain and from Austria, exploring what it means to be a culturally responsive leader in school, uh, a, a challenging area in many contexts. With colleagues from uh, Spain, from Turkey, uh, from Norway, uh, we're all in Austria. We're also exploring the idea of what it means to have a, a culturally responsive idea around evaluation and planning in schools. And underpinning all of this is, is the conception of giving everybody a voice and giving everybody a voice that's equally valued. And a lot of our work has been around student voice, stakeholder voice, parental voice within education. And in some ways, the place where we see this operating most effectively is in the work that we do in Northern Ireland. And it's work that has seen us work with a, a large number of communities or a large number of schools from across the divided communities of Northern Ireland to try and think of a way in which we value this idea of inclusion, of conversation and of, of honest critique, which to me is at the heart of the concept of interrogation, which, of course, uh, enlightens and enlivens our theme this year. I'd like to also acknowledge at, the mo at this moment the extraordinary work of the leadership team in CREA. Um, as people who have had some experience of organizing online conferences, we have some sense of the challenge of, that, that has been behind putting together this conference. So many thanks to all of you and many thanks to all your administrative colleagues as well. These things are very hard to do, but they're essential and vital for all of us, particularly those of us who are from the extended Korea family, outside perhaps of the continental United States, um, to connect with you and to have the opportunity to recreate the friendships that we have in the past and perhaps create new friendships. So best wishes to everybody for a wonderful week. I'm greatly looking forward to all of our engagements and all of our conversations, but even more so, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to be together in person in the very near future. Ston Liv Galer.
Ola itaha, ola itavai, ola itai, havai, havai, havai. Wakea kalani, papa kahonua, no koluna koluna, no kolalo kolalo, o kapono no ia e. E ola kakoa mauloa e. Aloha. Mahalo our very dear Kriya Hawaii Ohana. We clearly hear your request to enter. We warmly acknowledge the gifts you bring, the water, both fresh and salt from your islands, your gods of old and new, and your intentions of aloha. Please, please enter this space and join us all. Aloha, I am Kathy Tibbetts, a member of Kriya Hawaii. Like many cultures, Native Hawaiians have particular protocols associated with entering a space. You just saw Herb Lee, one of our co-founders, and a Konohiki, or steward of one of our restored traditional Hawaiian fish ponds, explaining where we are coming from, the gifts and values that we bring, and asking for permission to enter this space. You saw Stafford Hood, founder of Kriya, our host, and a dear friend to us all, inviting us into this space, acknowledging our gifts. From Kriya Hawaii, we are delighted to be in this space with you, to learn, to grow, to serve together. We look forward to engaging with you over the next few days and for many, many years to come. Mahalo for being our partner on this journey. Aloha. Hello everybody, I'm Rick Sperling and I'm the Director of the Office of Community-Based Research here at St. Mary's University in San Antonio, Texas. Our office was originally funded by a grant from the Department of Education. It was a Promoting Post-Baccalaureate Opportunities for Hispanic Americans grant. Title V. These funds go to universities based on eligibility as an HSI or Hispanic Serving Institution. These institutions have to have 25% or more uh, of the students self-identify as being Hispanic. We surpassed that by quite a bit. We're actually somewhere between 65 and 70%. So based on our student body, the demographics of the local community and the spirit and intent of that grant, we developed the office in a way to be able to provide free evaluation services to the, uh, local nonprofits. We also have academic programs at the undergraduate and graduate level that teach students how to do assessment and evaluation coming from the philosophy and principles of CREA. So welcome to the conference. But before I go, I'm going to have some of my students talk about what their experiences have been so far in our office and doing CREA work. Hi everybody, my name is Mia Stahl. Uh, I am a fifth year senior here at St. Mary's University. I'm finishing up my last semester. Um, I am a psych major. I have worked in CBR for uh, three years and some change now. Um, I've done the data analysis, the working with uh, nonprofits, um, working on projects uh, and programs. Um, something that's been impactful for me uh, in working with CBR has been um, our work with nonprofits, um, specifically uh, the ways in which we approach working with nonprofits. Um, coming from CREA, we've uh, approached it from a culturally responsive lens. Uh, that's something I hadn't heard about before um, coming to CBR, and uh, it's really opened up my world and actually has affected what I want to do in the future. Um, CBR has been, for me, a safe space at St. Mary's, um, somewhere where I can express uh, concerns and also find avenues to get things done that I feel passionately about on campus. Um, I also uh, feel as though CBR has been um, a pinnacle in the community surrounding St. Mary's. Um, one of the most impactful pieces, um, I think, is the way in which we um, interact with the community. Uh, the way we don't um, discriminate between any uh, nonprofits or uh, people who might need an evaluation or assessment service, um, particularly pe people of color. Um, it's been.
very um, impactful and moving for me, and I'm really glad I've gotten to be a part of it. Hi, my name is Pedro Gonzalez Avoite, and I'm a student here at St. Mary's University. I am a senior, and I'm, I have been involved in community-based research for about two years now. I am also taking the certification in community-based assessment and evaluation. Before coming to St. Mary's, I have been I had been involved with a couple nonprofits that dealt with education and immigration. Um, when I got here to St. Mary's, Dr. Sperling advised me to join the community-based research team, um, where I realized that a lot of the work that we do with these nonprofits uh, is really beneficial, specifically because I used to be a part of those nonprofits. Uh, and seeing myself come full circle in not only being a part of them and benefiting from them, but also helping along in the evaluation process uh, really shows just how uh, we can help those individuals that are being helped uh, get their voice heard uh, by people like me who have been part of both sides of the process. Uh, and CREA alongside with CBR and CBE help us achieve that goal. And there you have it. You've heard from two of my top students. They're always eager and ambitious to do really good work with our community partners. We know that we've still got a lot of work to do to improve our pedagogy, to improve our practice, and just to learn more about how to integrate the voices of all of the stakeholders into our work. But hey, that's why we're here. True, we'd rather be in Chicago, but we're still excited. Looking at the roster of attendees, looking at the sessions that are before us, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I'll see you around. Hello, I'm Orlando Taylor, a co-PI and executive director of the Center for the Advancement of STEM Leadership, or CASEL as we call it. And today I join my CREA colleagues in welcoming each one of you to this important event. We plan to be with you live and in living color in Chicago uh, for this meeting. But of course, circumstances prevented that. First, a word about CASEL. CASEL is a collaborative research and development center funded by the National Science Foundation and run by four partner organizations the University of the Virgin Islands, our lead institution, North Carolina a and State University in Greensboro, the Association of American Colleges and Universities, and my own institution, Fielding Graduate University. As I said, we are funded by the National Science Foundation, first in a, in a, in a pilot grant for $3 million, and in 2019, we received another $9 million to conduct our work. So we do research, um, outreach, knowledge transfer, education, and so forth, all about advancing leadership to, ad to advance STEM in American higher education, particularly at HBCUs. Castle has partnered with the Center for Culturally Responsive Evaluation and Assessment in order to, to enhance the capacity of our HBCU colleagues to construct competitive evaluation components for their grants to the National Science Foundation. That's a part of our mission. We have 50 affiliate institutions. They are all types of HBCUs. Liberal arts colleges, master's focused institutions, doctoral granting research universities, and so on. And as many of you in the audience might know, maybe all of you, HBCUs are national leaders in graduating African Americans in the STEM disciplines. That's the physical sciences, natural sciences, mathematics, engineering, the social sciences, and so on. They're national leaders. And, by the way, they're national leaders in producing graduates who go on to pursue the doctorate in STEM. And Castle is interested in enhancing that capacity to do even more, 
and over time to be able to influence all of American higher education to broaden their participation of African Americans in the STEM fields. Now, Castle has joined the University of Illinois and the Center for the Culturally Responsive Evaluation and Assessment because evaluation is a critical part of our work. Number one, we want to be able to evaluate our own work effectively. And so our colleagues at Illinois have been helpful with, helpful with that. But we're also interested in enhancing the capacity of our HBCU partner institutions, those 50 institutions that work with us, to enhance the strength of their own proposals to broaden participation in STEM so they can do even more in terms of their national leadership in advancing STEM. So our marriage, if you will, with the Center for uh, Culturally Responsive Evaluation and Assessment is very, very critical to our work. And certainly the work of our colleagues in the HBCU sector is extremely important for our nation. So it's in this context that we've offered over the last two days a very extensive a workshop on the latest developments, the latest trends in culturally responsive assessment and evaluation for teams of three people from 10 HBCU institutions, such that when they go back to their institutions, they may even strengthen their own work. These teams typically include a STEM faculty member or administrator a person from the sponsored programs office, perhaps a person from institutional research, maybe a person from the office of the provost and so on, but teams of individuals who can work together on their campus to enhance the quality of their proposals and take the message back to their other colleagues in other departments and other schools and colleges. That's our work and we are extremely proud and extremely happy to collaborate with the center uh, for responsive evaluation and assessment. We know their work. It's very important work. They brought a lot to us, and we hope that we brought a lot to them because we're here. We've, we're working with many of you. Many of you have been in our, uh, our workshops, our professional development activities, and so on, and we hope to continue that work. So on behalf of my colleagues with CASEL, all of those institutions, all of my colleagues in, in various settings, I say welcome to this wonderful conference. We look forward to meeting you face to face at a next meeting. Thank you again. Hello. Uh, oh, it doesn't look like my camera's on yet. There it is. Well, we are officially opened. I have to begin by saying that thanking you all for being here in terms of us being able to navigate to get to this space. Um, we, it's a credit to you all as well that we've made it here this far. Thank you for your support and for you being here. Um, thanks to Joe uh, Potlasek and his crew there for adapting for our welcome as well as what they would do for our closing as well. Um, it is a privilege and an honor to be here with you all. And as we continue for the next couple of days, um, I am just convinced that this is just what we're here to do. This is just the reasons why we're here. These just, again, we confirm why we do the work that we do. Uh, thank you to, uh, to Korea Dublin, Korea Hawaii, St. Mary uh, and Castle uh, for providing the video welcomes. Uh, I've already had two, the conference has been off to, an incredible start already as I've sat in on two full day workshops yesterday and two half day workshops today. And the conversation is already outstanding and invigorating. 
I want to thank you all for your patience and your support for getting us here. We are, my intent just for these brief remarks here was just to provide some space for us to make the transition into our next set of concurrent sessions uh, that will be starting at 2.15. And then we're all looking forward to the opening keynote by Dr. Patty Lowe of uh, Northwestern University beginning at five o'clock. Uh, so again, thanks much. Um, looking forward to an engaging couple of days, days more, and then obviously very much looking forward to tomorrow, the, uh, the celebrate the centennial birthday of our beloved elder, Edmund W. Gordon. Um, very special moments tomorrow for that and it's very special conversation. So I look forward to seeing you all, at least virtually. I've been sending a lot of notes to folks and um, looking for continue more of that as well. So you got a little space uh, to get ready for the uh, next set of, get ready for our first round of our concurrent uh, sessions. And thank you again for your, for your continuing patience and uh, look forward to seeing you in this virtual space. Thank you. <laughs>